Ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. Oye, ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. Escucha, ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. What up, mi gente? Sit back. Dímelo, linda. Welcome back. This is our final episode for season three. Good morning, <laughs> Julie ain't bothered about that. No. <laughs> this, is, this is Liz. This is Mari. I'm Suli. And folks, we've had an amazing year full of nuances, you know, just exciting things happening. Of course, you know, the Corona Chronicles hit us right in the middle. So that was my phone that fell. Um, <laughs> so we've had to learn different things and we're going to catch you guys up on everything that's uh, been happening with us individually and collectively. Some of the things that we're absolutely uh, distraught about. Zuli has her rant. <laughs> um, and definitely we're, we're going to move on that. Well, that rant was last night when I was five glasses in. I don't know that I remember it exactly, but. <laughs> well, I do. I do. And I'll, I'll get you going. You know, I can do that. And then, you know, we have, um, even though today is our final recording, we actually have a couple of extra little surprises that we're going to put in for you guys so don't count us out yet for the season so <laughs> Zuli yes sorry I'm trying to hide my forehead Why? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so here's the thing <laughs> this here's the thing we're recording via zoom because we're trying to do the social distancing so aside from audio those of you that are listening only via audio we do have a video and it will be up on YouTube yes yeah, you just had to pause there. And hey, if, listen, if the ladies from The View can do it, the ladies from Ensalo Chronicles can do it. Um, <laughs> except this is so, no makeup. This is waking up from having a huge hangover. <laughs> I mean, we're making it work right now. <laughs> Double so chin, just, forehead and all. Why don't we start with you, Zoo? Because you were very angry last night. Yeah, okay, But I can't remember. What was I angry? Wow, was I an angry drunk last night? You were I can tell you drunk. why you were angry. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you why you were angry. We were um, guest speakers at a Zoom party. Okay. And um, Zuli was just kind of, you know, she, we're real amp and we're real live and we're real, you know, whatever. We're and true Dominicans. Yeah. So we walk in there like rah, rah. And the whole well, time. I, know, yeah, I think everyone, <laughs> you know what it is? I think it's because we become used to doing this, like the whole video. And, the, and then we probably don't even realize how used to it we are until we're with other groups of women. And we're like, why is nobody else so am? Like we're amped. Like I was ready and, and everyone's energy last night was so mellow and mine was like at a hundred. So I kind of wanted the same energy. Is it because you had energy. six drinks in maybe? Well, it was four, but yeah, you can keep multiplying. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. It was, yeah, it was a lot. No, it was well, a whole bottle. I think I think one of the okay. one of the comedians uh, said, you know, can you turn your mics on? Because I want I, I I feel like I'm talking to myself. To myself, yeah. Yeah, and you know, so that's why I was being like super expressive because also the mics were off, so you couldn't really hear people um, people's reactions. But Zuli was saying that shit personal. She's like, why is nobody wearing? Why is that? Why, you know, not the, the host of like the the wine. The, 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 the event was good. I don't want to, you know, the event was good. It no, no, no. It was, per, it was Listen, perfect. Listen, I'm the on a direct, I'm on a direct DM with the Gypsy Girl and also with Vagisteam. I'm getting steamed left and right. I'm yeah, ordering my good. shit tomorrow. <laughs> I was just on a different level last night. Zuli just thought that the energy. Like, they didn't like us. They didn't like us. I'm like, I don't, don't take it personally. It you, maybe it could be that I've been quarantined too long. So seeing people, I was like, oh. I was well, excited. But Mari, what you don't know is that behind the scenes, um, you know, Zuli had called me. Zuli and Gwen called me because, you know, we have all our family stuff going on. <clears throat> and she decided at that moment that that was going to be the conversation that we were going to have related yeah. to Corona. So the rant then turned into a screaming, yelling situation regarding. Oh, okay. Um, I don't remember this. Okay. The, the killing okay. of the chickens, the oh, of the milk. Yes. Oh, so Ooh, does that oh, yeah, I did want to bring, 
Thank you. Yes. No, I do remember now. So, I, damn, I was screaming. So there you I was go. angry about chickens. And As you paused. I mean, listen. Yeah, because their kid, they, you said that they slaughtered so, a whole bunch of chickens. Oh, yeah. So and, I was reading an article. I was reading an article, and it was saying how they were going to slaughter a million chickens. Now, that's a lot of chickens. A million chickens, and they were just going to throw them out because they don't have the... Um, they don't have a way of bringing these produce down or, you know, the poultry or the, the milk and all this stuff. They don't have trucks right now. They're short staff. So these farmers don't have a way or means of bringing this into the supermarkets and the um, restaurants. So because they don't have a mean, they're running out of feed. Um, so they can't keep up with the feed and the chickens and the eggs. And so what they're, finding out that what they have to do now is that they have to slaughter these animals that they're throwing out milk by the gallons. And I'm like, so many people are starving. You're telling me that we can't find a way right now. We cannot find a private company that is willing to go up to these farms and do deliveries and the government can't pay for that so that we're not throwing away all that. This, this is a shame. Pay we for should that. not Yo, there are people crazy. that are making billions and billions of corporations and billionaires that they can't have a private truck. And like why isn't PETA all over everything? this? Because at the end, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but let's think about it. PETA's always like, oh, hurting animals, hurting animals. Okay, people eat animals, right? People eat chicken and cows and all that. But now it's just going to waste. We're not even killing them and eating them, which to me is worse. I, I, I don't know. I yeah, I mean, I was, just, would, I was upset. Yeah, I, I guess, uh, um, for you know, when you're killing them for sustenance, I guess there's a justification to some right. extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. But however, so, so, um, so Friday night and wine equals Zuli rants about chickens. 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 <laughs> I, apparently it was, it triggered it triggered me yesterday. <laughs> but, you know, on, on, on a serious note, if you, and, and you know, we'll, this is a, the serious that I want to get with this, but I mean, the this pandemic has brought out the best and the worst of humanity. Um, we, we are seeing riots now in Michigan, uh, you know, uh, promulgated by our president and, you know, with the swastikas and the Confederate. Our, no. Our, no. Okay, so the elected, their elected president, you know, the white supremacist and everything about reopening. Capitalist. And people making, yeah. Yeah, people making ridiculous statements that they'd rather be dead than not at work. Like, really, you have to look at these things. And I, I'm not saying shut down the economy. Oh, no. Forever. Oh. But there oh, is a, a, a process by which it should be opened. You know, right. and it has to be done safely because a second wave of this, it could, could be disastrous, you know, even more so than it has been. I have, I have a theory though. I have a okay. theory. See, I don't mind that they're doing this because they're all going to infect each other. They're going to cancel each other out. That's going to be, I'm sorry, but you want to be stupid, be stupid together so that y'all can all get your shit. And that way, yeah, I, I it's mean, just you know, unfortunate in one in one way, you know, I feel like the Republicans are wrong, but I also feel that the Democrats are wrong as well. I think they're being too extreme with the let's shut everything down, let's not do this, let's not do that. There has to be a better system. And I think what the media puts on TV is very confusing. Um, I think at the end of the day, what people need to start doing is do what you feel is right for you. If you don't feel that it's safe for you, don't go outside because it, don't listen to what what's going on because it's just insane. Everyone. Well, has in addition, it. your behavior impacts somebody else, so exactly. your lack of responsibility affects. You know, um, go ahead, Mari. You want to say something? No, no, no. But do you guys remember our conversation earlier uh, in the season in our episode Corona Chaos? When I was talking to you guys about this, I was like, Americans are entitled. Oh, it's that we're not yeah. like China where the government tells you to do something and we're going to be like, okay, we're, we're not disciplined. No, we don't have. And that's what, and that's, you know, like it's been like almost like everything that I thought would happen is, and this is like the stupidity that I'm seeing. Now I do agree. Um, you know, when you see the people on the beaches, they are social, they're six feet away from each other and they're still going to close the beach. 
you know, like, uh, okay, no, not the beaches in Florida because I don't know what's up with people in Florida or the water in Florida, but I, they can never follow a fucking rule. But in California, the, you know, the people, I was looking at it and they were like overhead and the governor, uh, and the governor still closed down the beach. And I was like, wait a second, like, that's a little bit of an infringement on because some people may need that. Like, sometimes the water soothes me. I would want to sit by the water. And if I have to sit six feet away from someone, 13 feet away, whatever it takes, you know, let me do that. Let me have that choice. Right. I think what sometimes, I think what people are forgetting is that, you know, this is an airborne uh, illness, virus. And that's why it's so crucial. But I want to ask you something, guys. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not complaining about this because I've certainly benefited from it, uh, maybe a little too much. I find it interesting that liquor stores were considered essential and that they <laughs> remained open throughout this entire process. Well, the fact that they're and the secondary, and then I'll let you guys house. and I want you guys to comment. And so secondary to that. Mm-hmm that what they're thinking about reopening are nail salons. So I'm gonna just put that out there for discussion. I already know where you're going with that because I was looking at it, I was thinking about it. Have you seen these I, nubs? I, you know, um, I, had, I saw a video that someone made like a scary movie um, about- Oh no, my God, yes, you sent it to us. Yes. I love terrible. that, you need and to post so, it, I love it. It was like a scary movie about like a, a couple and he wants to go out and she's like, don't go out there. And no, they're trying to kill us and they're trying to, and you know, uh, the wealthy people have their stylists that come and do their nails and they come and do their hair. So they ain't going to the, so who's going to the gym? Wealthy people have a gym in their house. So who's going to the gym? It's us, the, you know, middle class, the, the, the brown and black people. You know, who, who's walking around with nails looking like Ed, Edward Scissorhands? It's not them. It's our people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So in a way, and I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but then again, I am. Um, I'm thinking that, you know, it's kind of like the same thing that I was thinking. Fuck it. Let them protest. They'll eliminate themselves. Let them go do their nails. They're going to eliminate themselves. Let them go to the barbershop. Mm-hmm. They're going to eliminate themselves. Let them go to the gym. They're going to eliminate themselves. Well, it's just like how- almost population control, I feel like. Population right. control. Yeah. Well, just how it was, um, how the, the virus was pretty much killing more brown and black and, and, you know, the minorities more than it was the other, you know, mm-hmm. people. So um, once they figured that out, they were like, oh, well, let's just open up everything. <laughs> yeah. They were like, not affecting us. <laughs> but here's my thing. If they're why the ones who are dying, it, we can spare them. Why is know? it all of a sudden a surprise that minorities are make up the largest percentage of people working in blue collar jobs. So the trains and, you know, the buses and things since, since when is that a surprise? Like they're, they're, they go now and like, Oh my God, you know, uh, minorities, black and brown communities are being affected more because they have no help. No shit, Sherlock. This is not fucking new. Right. Yeah. None but of this now- is new. But this has brought the spotlight to it because when you have to do the numbers, the statistics can't lie. And right. so now, you know, the people out in Suffolk County can't be like, what are you talking about? There's equal opportunity for everyone. No, there's not. Right. No, there's no, not. There's not. Right. So, the Bronx um, has the highest rate of asthma in any county and that's because of the density and the pollution although one thing that's come out of this good is the fact that there's less pollution right well that's true that's true yeah. did you guys see the pictures of the animals they're just like walking around like, what like what's fuck? going on <laughs> where are the humans like, do that again Mari. do it again do it again <laughs> <laughs> anyways Listen, guys uh, that's wait, right. wait wait but real quick but that's why did you guys see that video with the ufo Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you what happened. They were looking down and they were like, why is everything so clear? What the fuck is going on? Let's go check this shit out. Where, where the fuck are they? Where'd, <laughs> Where'd they go? Where'd they, they go? go? They were confused. But anyway. Um, but anyways, all right. So uh, we had, we just finished our um, Corona Chronicles series, which was yes. a huge hit. 
And um, that was awesome. And so, you know, Corona has become like a huge topic because it's probably like the biggest thing that's happened uh, within this last year. But I want to get back to celebrating us and our first year as uh, a podcast, the Salon Chronicles. We made it without killing each other. Although um, slowly, you know, people started dropping <laughs> dropping off. Um, but, you know, for this, our finale, we will bring everybody back and see what's going on with them. Guys, you yes. got to stay tuned. You got to say, hey, listen, um, if not for Corona, next week, we would have been preparing for our party. Yes. For a big gala. It's okay, it's postponed. We didn't cancel it. It's just no. not going to happen now. Plus, we also And I didn't still lose the weight, so I need a little bit more time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if anything, yeah. I gained Corona 30. You see me? I'm trying to like not have five have chins. Like you see me? So I'm like standing up like this. <laughs> and then also, so we have two pending events. We have our our, our uh, anniversary, and then we have the reunion of the Vagina Monologues cast. True. We didn't that do that. we still that. need to do. There's never there too late. There's so much and going on. Oh, yeah. So, Maddie, why don't we start Rona. with you? Let's give us a, a quick rundown of what's been happening with you. Bring us up to date. Well, um, with me. Okay. So, in this last year, we started uh, the podcast. That was amazing. It was a lot of hard work. I'm glad you guys stuck it out. I apologize because I know you had to deal with my fucking ass for, you know, a whole year. And I'm sure <laughs> you lit candles and, and had some to do some yoga to deal with my fucking energy. Um, but uh, but I'm grateful for that. And in that in this year, my you know my daughter graduated within all this, so she graduated college, um, and then. Uh, my niece got married, and I officiated her wedding, so I became an officiant. Um, nice. Then, <clears throat> soon after, we had what happened with my son. He had the brain aneurysm. He made it through. Right after that, uh, we decided that we were going to buy a house. We found a house. We bought a house. We moved. Um, uh, damn it. Am I missing any other things? Uh, you want more than that? <laughs> you had a busy year, woman. It it really it really has. We did the vagina monologues, and you traveled. Oh yes, I went to um, Cancun. I had never been. I went to Ibiza, uh, Barcelona. I went to Mexico City, and now my ass is house poor. So I'm gonna sit my ass here and <laughs> <laughs> use my sit imagination. Still. Yes, yes. So that, that's this year in review for me. Awesome. What about you? Don't Sue? even ask me. <laughs> I've done shit. I've done nothing. That's not true. I, you traveled? So I traveled. I traveled. It will be a year in August that I went to Portugal. That was very nice, very interesting. Um, it was the first time I went to another country other than the Dominican Republic. Um, so I really enjoyed it, and I wanted to now – do more traveling and I was supposed to go haven't been to Dominican Republic in over 20 years so it was one of the trips I was going to do this summer with my son and of course now that's not going to happen so we're going to have to postpone that but um let's see what else uh we, vagina monologues um we were all a part of that so I did that and it kind of opened up uh a part of me, um, I didn't realize, first of all, I have respect for people that do theater. I didn't realize how hard it is to not only learn your lines, but also bring in your own character out because it plays into the whole, you know, theatrical part of it. So you really have to be animated. And, you know, so it was, it was, wow, it was nerve wracking. But um, so we had three shows. And in the last one, that's where I was just like, yes, <laughs> did it. I got my lines right and everything, but, and then we were going to do more, um, in theater and again, Rona done fuck that up for us. Um, Ro -ro. I know. Um, other than that, I haven't really, you know, I am looking for a place just like Mari. Um, so hopefully that's something that's in the works for me. Um, I want to move. I want a home. Um, so you I have a, a lot door. of things. You say you want a door. <laughs> I want a door. Yes. I want a door. I want a door that leads into a house. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things that's in the works for me that I had to pause, put on pause because of, you know, the current 
situation. Um, but no, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to another year. We have so much that we're like working on right now. Um, and I can't wait to see, to see that into fruition. So that's it for me. I really don't awesome. have much. Mm. What about you, Liz? Um, yeah, Liz. so I had a very busy year and it's, it's showing that it's not going to stop at all. <laughs> um, so I try, I went to Jamaica with my kids. We had a really nice vacation and then I, I ran away from home and I went to Florida um, on two separate occasions by myself. And that was very nice. Um, I was part of the plans to go to Dominican Republic. I was supposed to go in June and then again in August. And of course that <clears throat> um, is, is, is off. Um, I, uh, other than that, I've been pretty much um, uh, consumed with caring for my mother. So, uh, you know, for those of you, you know, who follow us know that, you know, my mother had been very ill and there were a couple of times where it was touch and go. And then Rona hit and then we hadn't been able to see her for a month and her health was significantly declining. So very long story short, I was able to get her discharged home under hospice care last Friday. And that's sort of the culmination for me. Um, my blood sugar on fr my blood pressure on Friday was 155 over 121. So I normally run 90 over 70. So that was a, a reality check for me in the sense of how much all of the stress. In addition, for you guys know, in terms of my job, um, it has grown exponentially. I'm busier now than I've ever been. Um, from a psychotherapeutic standpoint, um, you know, in doing work in crises and managing the mental health concerns of, of a lot of people. And so I'm, I'm working from home, but I'm on the front lines as far as that's concerned, um, pretty much, you know, 24 hours a day. So that's been exhausting as well. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful. Nonetheless, I open up my refrigerator every day. And I'm, 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 I'm very grateful that I have food to eat. I have my friends. I belong to uh, an enclave of women in terms of uh, the Mami Chula Social Club. And we've all been supportive and helped each other get things done, whether it's get a notary or, or get somebody in to put eyes on my mother or just whatever it was. Um, we've been there for each other. And uh, that's pretty much where I turn. Well, I have a birthday on Wednesday. Um, I won't tell you how much I turn, never mind, <laughs> but I have one of those coming up on Wednesday. And lucky for me, it coincides with Cinco de Mayo and my birthday. And then usually right after that is when we have our anniversary gala. So it's a month of celebrations for me. And I love right. the month of May even more. So thank you everybody for all the little, just quick um, updates on everybody. I, I think that each, each one of us had our own little thing going on, the, the, the good, the bad, the roller coaster ride, but here we are nonetheless. And yeah. so now we want to bring in our special guests um, that, you know, started out this journey with us and due to a variety of, of, of different reasons, they had to, you know, move on to do other things, but they are still near and dear in our hearts and we are absolutely thrilled to have the gang that got it all started back together so today we have with us from new jersey gwen um from the heights we have jay that came in from florida and of course you guys the wonderful and ever interesting bomba hailing all the way from California. Welcome, ladies. Hi. <laughs> hello, hello. So we wanted to, to bring, mute myself for that. We wanted to bring everybody back together because it's our first year finale, and we, you know, we all started together. And like I said earlier, we everybody, you know, different people had to go different ways, and so the three musketeers are left standing. But we've never forgotten about our original members. And they are guests occasionally, but we thought it would be fitting to have them come on and tell us what's been going on with their lives and how um, how they're doing and, and what El Salon, what involvement they had, if not at all. Just give it away. Who wants to start? Let's Liz. start with Jay. Hi. 
<laughs> Desembucha, what you doing? Well, what am I doing? Um, so before, you know, before coronavirus started, I had gone to, um, I had uh, returned back to New York in, I think it was October. I, I went back somewhere between September and October. And um, from being here with mom and mom was doing really good. And then, uh, you know, the, everything was okay. Uh, according to, you know, if you weren't really listening to the news, you didn't know that coronavirus was uh, even going to uh, touch the States because it wasn't uh, being promoted here in the United States as uh, something that was going to affect us the way it's affecting us now. So um, between that time, I was uh, in Florida, being with the family, taking care of the kids and myself and working and the home and everything. Everything was great. Um, but unfortunately, when we, you know, came March, I came to visit here in New York and uh, the virus was just full blown and and I uh, was here for like almost a month in February to March and it just uh, ended up being uh, crazy. Uh, my mom became a little bit uh, more ill, and uh, so I had to, uh, we were here for a little bit, and then uh, we couldn't visit her anymore in, this, in, in the nursing home. So uh, under, after that, uh, I had to go back to Florida and get things uh, situated, and here I am back in New York. Um, in Florida, it affected us a little bit. I have a son that's uh, graduating, and he's not able to to be part of a graduation, part of his, uh, he's not able to be part of uh, his uh, baseball uh, senior year finale. So it's kind of like really affected him. It's really affected him, but um, he's pushing through. Uh, he's just gonna virtually graduate and he's gonna push on through college. We don't know which one yet. He does have a few offers, so he's excited about that. Um, my freshman is excited to become a sophomore and Hopefully, he says he doesn't have to go through any of this uh, when he graduates. Uh, he's got uh, three more years. Um, and my older kids, everybody's just doing well. Just, you know, the family is just trying to deal with uh, this virus and all the losses that we've had and the change of life. Uh, you know, if you're affectionate and you were a person that was always hugging and kissing your family, now you're, you kind of like have to think twice before you do that. Um, and just shielding yourself and the interaction has just become very minimal. And uh, so I think that's changed a lot and it's become a, a big impact for us. And um, with all this happening, you've had like more of, a, of an opportunity for rethinking the quality of life and the time that you spend with people and not having to uh, spend your time with nonsense. And I feel that Back in the day, you know, we just spent a lot of time dealing with nonsense and not dealing with the things that we're supposed to be dealing now. That, and I think this has taught us all a, a good lesson, a good lesson in life on how we should uh, on how we should be. And, you know, I guess every day you have to live it as if it was your last because that's become a norm here in the United States for all of us. But, but not only that, Jane, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but not only that, but also taking care of yourself, right? Us, like moms, mm -hmm. we tend to put ourselves last mm -hmm. and not take care of ourselves and, you know, do self-wellness and say, you know, I want to do this with myself and say, you know what, I'm going to do it now. Today is the day that I'm going to do it. So that's something too that we have to do now going forward. Right. Take care of ourselves. Everybody's become more cautious about their health and, you know, just more vitamins, drinking more, more teas and things that are going to be more healthy. More wine. I don't know about all that because Mari's been looking up sensual massages and how to, you know, manage all that stuff. So I don't who's know about giving you, who's giving you that massage though? Let's talk about that. <laughs> well, no, no she's okay. getting it. <laughs> let's, let's back it up a little bit the other day. Cause the thing is, and this is a conversation that we were having uh, on um, via text, but uh, Liz loves to blow up my spot. So um, <laughs> yo, last night we because she be virtual... getting flexible nowadays, like doing a whole bunch of yoga to be ready to be like. See, time. Corona has like... been good for some people. Some people <laughs> have really connected with their sexual lives and with their inner selves. I mean, I think that's great. Hell yeah! All you have time to do right now is fuck. 
thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes, please don't bring any Corona babies out here. Look, I don't know. Let me tell you what happened to my contraception. So I was on the Nuvo ring and all of a sudden I needed to re-up because I had three months for the, you know, the first three months of 2020. So now I'm calling my doctor and I'm like, look, I need another three months. Let's get a refill. And then they start, what do you mean? Why am I lying? I'm telling the truth. So he tells me, um, you can't have the new ring anymore because you're over 35. That can cause a heart attack. You have to get on the pill. I said, why? It's working well for me. I didn't have to, um, you know, use it. I haven't used pills since I was like 16, 17. So now I have to remember to take a pill every day. That's going to be a problem. That may bring about a Corona baby. You know, that's my issue right now. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, you hear him? I can't. He's saying I got with a brother and now it's readjusted my whole vibe. That's why I had to get pills. Okay. Well, and the Nuvo good. ring kept coming out. It kept coming out. You know, and I'm like, oh my God, I have a three hour window period. Yes, snatch, girl. Snatch that hand again because that's exactly what I felt. And I was like, oh my God, where's the Nuvo ring? Where's the Nuvo ring? And he's like, I don't know. I told you what it does. It became a like, cock ring. Uh, exactly. How the hell do you take the ring out with the penis? I have never in my life experienced some shit like that. Well, then it's I about thought it was a setup. Skills. I thought it was a setup at first. Now I we understand like, oh. why you're in California. <laughs> I was gonna say, bitch, she's like, I got furloughed. I'm flying out to California. I'm gonna furlough my ass in California. <laughs> For real, I couldn't deal. I couldn't deal. In New York, um, at first with this whole corona thing, you know, people thought it would last, what, three weeks, a month tops. So then we uh, started working remotely. And then um, I guess what happened? How many weeks passed by? An entire month passed by. Working remotely, everything was cool. Then we eventually thought we would be back at work in April, right? So this thing, it, it got really, really worse. Uh, everybody started like shutting down. For me in the fashion business, stores started shutting down immediately. And then we got this call, like everyone needs to be on this conference call. We're going to let you know the state of the business. That's what they call it. So all my coworkers were all texting each other like, oh shit, what's happening? Oh, something's gonna happen, whatever. We're all gonna lose our jobs. And they got on a call with like, um, with about like 200 people or more. And they told us, we're gonna put you on furlough for 90 days. And we're like, okay. So they even sent out a definition of what a furlough was, which is like, okay, you're gonna have to take some unpaid leave. You can't do any of our work, even though you have our tools, you know, like laptops and things like that. And then you'll just, you know, we'll see what happens after 90 days where, where we're at in the business. And that's when I was like, well, I'm out of here. I'm not staying in New York. My son didn't want to come back to New York. He's trying to stay in Florida. And I said, so what am I doing here? I'm just going to go and quarantine with someone else. It's a little bit. see what happens. In the warmer states, it's a little bit different. So, you know, you, and you have more, there's, you're not confined. So it's good that you did go to California because you're not mm -hmm. phobic as you would be here. Right. Well, I'm it's also, you know, we know that Lisa travels for dick. So, um, mm -hmm. right. you know, <laughs> as we all do. So not only that, Mari, she that. decorated the whole house. She, she, oh, I thought you were going to say oh, yeah. she the dick. I thought you were going to say she decorated the dick. I was going to be like, that's wow. Well, with the new like Christmas tree. <laughs> I was with the new mm -hmm. <laughs> So she designed, she put her design skills to work and she decorated the Absolutely. whole house. The guy's like, yeah. bitch ain't leaving. So I'm gonna put her here yeah. to work. So but yeah. not only that, Dali, you launched your line. Tell us a little bit about that. No, so then, um, so late, uh, I think it was late in November of last year, I was like um, still working with my son on the line and everything. And I'm like, you know what? I was trying to find investors because I had built a business plan and to no avail. They were all like, oh, well, what's your sales traction like this and that. And I'm like, well, you know, there are no sales traction as of right now because I wouldn't be looking for an investor if I was already making sales. Hello. Mm -hmm. But whatever. It was this whole Shark Tank situation. And I'm just like, 
I can't deal with these people. Let me just move on and let's see what happens. So I got a, a shirt made. I started with one shirt and you know, it's funny. There's a saying that says, once you start it, you know, if you build it, they will come and things like that. Started, you know, building it and putting it out there. Started with one shirt. Um, the holidays came around. And then at the turn of the year, it just so happened that one of my, I manage an artist too, Block. He's been on our, um, he's been on our, our show. So his friend, uh, DJ Junebug, was having an album release party in Orlando at the end of February. So the opportunity came about that he's like, oh, do you want to sponsor the show? We're going to have different vendors there. And I'm like, this is great. It was, it was part of my marketing plan for the business plan. And it would be considered our first marketing blitz for Sway. So all of a sudden I found the manufacturer, which is said individual in California, who manufactured like a small capsule for Sway. And we had everything ready by the end of February. And we have like hoodies, crew necks, t-shirts, men's and women's, like everything worked out. But I was, I had to immerse myself financially, myself as an individual into it in order to make it happen. When I wasn't doing it, it nothing was happening. So that was kind of cool how it all worked out. And like the bigger picture, it, it was, it's kind of dope. So it was a success. You know, I kind of broke even for that marketing blitz because we did sell a lot, but it's expected, but at least it, it, it works for brand awareness and it just kicked us off into something else. You know, like right now the website is being uh, created and we'll be selling off of the website because no one's really shopping right now, you know, as far as like going into stores. So there's no pop-up shops or anything, but at least you can buy on the website. Um, and it's just rolling one day at a time, you know, with this Corona thing, you have to reinvent yourself. You have to reinvent, I had to reinvent the brand. Um, what's the next best thing that's selling and it's face masks. So now we got into face masks out here. We're selling face masks with the logo and just seeing what's the next hot item that's going to bring in revenue. You know, it, it's been quite the adventure um, Are you ever in the coming last back four to months. New York? Oh. Or should I ask him? <laughs> yes, I know, right? I mean, in Cali, Dolly, stayed in New York. Up, if it was up to him, I, I wouldn't leave. But I mean, I figure I can go back and forth. We spoke about this too when we first met, which was at the turn of the this year, um, because last year was a hot mess. But we'll talk about that later on. Um, and I said, "How is this going to work? Oh, it'll work. We'll make it work." Because the first couple of months we were meeting on the East Coast in Florida in New York, you know, we would go back and forth. And then when this furlough happened, I'm like, you know what, let me just go to California and chill over there. It's not, and then, you know, I still pay rent in New York and take care of all of that. I'm just not physically there. So the funny thing I find about all of that is that everyone's like, oh my God, I miss you, this and that. And I'm like, okay, we're talking though. It's not like you're gonna visit me in New York. You didn't visit me for the month I was working remotely when this whole COVID happened. They just want you there, you know? Yeah, but yeah. But it's, yeah, but, but it's, it's good. It's good because you kind of, during all of this, found, you know, and it's sometimes that's how it happens when you're not looking for it. It's oh my when God, you find really that wasn't. person. I really wasn't looking for it. I, I was in this whole, I wasn't stuck there, but I was um, in this space with uh, Bay, which was who I was dating for like two and a half years um, before you know from like 2017 I was dating him and then all of a sudden he ended up just dying like last July and it just happened from one day to the next out of nowhere healthiest person in the world always at the gym buff all this and that and then he just died after we were like really coming to a place where it was like dope you know you know how you say you're reaching and it was like it was it was just great and then all of a sudden I get a call in the morning and they're like, oh, before you see social media, I want you to know, you know, that such and such person passed away. And I'm like, what? I was in total shock, so much shock that I know you're gonna think this is the stupidest thing in the world, but I thought he had faked his death. Do the bills and all this shit. I thought he put, I thought he pulled a Machiavelli. I was like, that's bullshit. You know, it's impossible. And sure enough, when I opened up social media, it was like, all over the but it place. was interesting, Dali, because we were at the beach the weekend before. Yes. All of us. 
And I was yes. like, mm, this is a new Dali. This is, a, yeah. this is, I said, she's all roped up, literally, the weekend <laughs> yeah. before we were at the yeah. beach. Yeah. Um, so that was a tough time. That was a tough time. That was, and it, it, it seemed so impossible. And at first I was just like, oh, you know, it'll go away. The shit did not go away. It, it, it's something that I sometimes wish I didn't, experience you know how you have those experiences that it's like you know what I could have done without that but shit happens for a reason and I think it was just to uh, when you yeah. think about it it doesn't ever go away you know um it doesn't matter what where you are how much time has passed, you know, when you think about it, it was just, it was real. It was, it was hard. And I had to um, just find ways to cope with it, you know, and it's, it's never forgetting, even if you get with somebody else, this and that, it's just, um, I don't know. I don't even know what to say in regards to that. I, it's not like I'm over it, but I'm also... <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I'm over it, but um, it's You're just finding new ways to be able to move on. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you didn't uh, die too, you know, so you have to continue living and honoring whatever and was you had. Right, right. You know what's and, crazy? And, and, the and death. taking with you what you learned from it. Right. Yeah. But I was going to say, you know, death is something that we know for certain is going to happen to all of us. Yet I know we can never prepare for it. No, but I'm yeah. just saying we can never prepare for it. It doesn't matter. It just is, it doesn't matter. You can have someone that's there sick and ill, and yeah. you know that eventually that person's gonna pass away, and still you that's true cannot prepare for it. It's just something that it's not easy to deal with. It, I'm sorry that happened to you. It's a little bit different. Oh, yeah. It's a little bit different when you know somebody's sick and ill than when you're talking to me today and but even that yes and, and you're not there tomorrow you're like wait yeah. that's exactly how it happens that's exactly how it happens it was like yes what? bitch is dead you know she died it's just like it felt like someone was just snatched from your life right when mm -hmm. it was you didn't at have its a best a chance to say goodbye or a chance to uh, nothing nothing and it's just like there never gonna be any answers um for questions that you have there's you just have right. to deal with what you know at that moment, you know? Right. Give you time and to, pre to prepare. No, but that's <laughs> also in part why what Jeanette was saying before makes so much sense because mm -hmm. we always act like we're going to have time and time yeah. is promised to no one. So you have to do whatever it is you want to do. You have to do, do it now, like there's Absolutely. no tomorrow. You yeah. know, which brings us to uh, Gwendolyn, who just up and left the DR. She's like, fuck this shit. I'm going to DR, and I'm doing it now. Yes, yes. And so Gwendolyn, you know, bring us up to date. You know, like, oh, what, yeah, how has that been? Before we get to Gwen, I just want to say something really quick. So interestingly about Dali, what you guys may not know, is that Bay number uh, next door right now, he and the world is so small. He's mm -hmm. the son of one of our best friends, like in our, in our clique, in, in that clique. He's the son of our best friend's childhood mother that she calls her mom. And yes. it never connected and they never knew any of we that. We didn't. I knew his mother for like eight years before I ever met him in 2020. Isn't and that never crazy? Connected and we didn't know. And so in <laughs> talking or whatever, we're like, hold on a second. Wait a second. That's Christine. Yes. Uh, best friend's son and all this other yes. stuff. So it's, like, it's like a whole new other family that she already had and now it's back again. <laughs> that, it wasn't that, the that, time that. yet. It was probably yes. supposed to happen. You were going to meet him eventually one way or another. So, hey. Yeah. So he yeah. comes from good seeds. He comes from good seeds. Absolutely. He's definitely good. We've definitely driven each other crazy. I'm not even going to front. You know, this this whole quarantine shit, being in the house with someone, like, we're definitely getting to know each other on all kinds of levels because there's no interruption. There's no, I got to work for 10 hours a day. No, we're just here. <laughs> you yeah, know? that's what's happening with Gwen now. Her and Zoo have become, Ooh. like, extra. Gwen actually has squatters rights, I told her, that Zoo can't throw her out. Oh, they're staying together? 
she, this is because remember, she can, I'll let Gwen tell the story of how she ended up coming and staying and how oh. she's not leaving. Liz stays board guarding conversation. So, <laughs> like, we were like, let's cut to Gwen. And she was like, but wait a minute. So, guys, I'm going to come in. Mari, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in. All right. <laughs> so, first, thank you, ladies, for having me and us, so the original fan, on your show. Dolly, I'm really sorry for your loss, hon. You know, my heart goes out to you. I can only imagine how difficult this, you know, it is for you. So I'm sorry about that. And good for you for getting on your shit and just getting the fuck out of Dodge, out of New York. Absolutely. I commend you for that. I commend you for that. Um, so I did the same uh, about a year ago. My husband and my son, we decided to just have a better quality of life. And we decided not to move to Georgia, but to the Dominican Republic. La República Dominicana, and it has been a challenge for the past year, uh, ups and downs. So we're trying to still move, if that makes any sense, because I've been more in New York than in than in the Dominican Republic, because like my tia Maria, Janet and Lizette's mom, my dad has also been uh, very ill for the past year. Um, you know, a lot of health issues, uh, open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. So it's been a challenge for all of us, I think, for the family, for myself. And, you know, in between things, I'm still trying to activate and just kind of get things in order in the Dominican Republic, you know. But um, things could be worse. Uh, I think that this experience has been a huge eye-opener for, you know, in my marriage, for myself as a mom, as a woman. Um, how I am so adaptable because I can definitely adapt to many changes. Um, I know that I'm a swimmer, not a sinker. So that goes beside, you know, besides the, the saying because, there, again, there's been so many obstacles, but there's also been good things, right? Um, my dad is now getting better. He's now um, in another situation was not as uh, a lower level of rehab. Um, my tia Maria now is home with my cousins, which is wonderful. They've done mm -hmm. a great job setting, setting her up, which, you know, it's bittersweet, but it's also a good thing. And I've also been extremely gracious and fortunate to have my cousin Suleika um, here with us because because of her, we've been able to quarantine and kind of roll with the punches during this difficult time because, listen, I have a five-year-old son. It's been nonstop for him, you know, with the changes and everything. And he's still kind of just chilling. He's not, you know, getting crazy, which helps me. We've kind of been going through this rhythm, eh, toda junta, you know, como, como una familia, like a unit. And we just, you know, we're, we're very uh, grateful overall um, for the good and the bad. But uh, yeah, that, that's any questions with my move? Anyone? <laughs> no, but Have tell us a little underwear? bit. <laughs> One at a time. I haven't. <laughs> okay. Wait, I want to know. I want to know what yeah. happened in DR and like what's popping over there. That's what I was there. gonna like, ask. The, I saw your son in school. Like, how did yeah. you adapt to that? So he loves it. You know, again, okay. it's it's a different quality of life, right? Because listen, mm -hmm. it, in New York, as we all know, it's like, what do you do? You go to work, the hustle and bustle, and then you're home, right? Mm -hmm. Unlike mm -hmm. Dominican Republic you i take him to school i work remote thankfully so i have the flexibility to do many other things and i did it that way because of my child and also because of my, awesome. yeah my happiness you know i can't do the whole robotic bullshit i can't that just drove me crazy right um so he loves it he loves his friends we're always doing something even on weekdays um i pick him up at school we go for ice cream, we go to the park, we, we go to the beach, you know, you don't need a hundred dollars to have a wonderful so time. So you're, in, you're enjoying the, I the am little en things in life. I am enjoying the little things in life. I'm embracing the whole Caribbean life. I am embracing the change, which I'm huge on that. So did you, yeah. did you find it easier to move out there because you were married and had a family? Like, would you have done it if you were single? Um, that's a great question. So a few parts to it. I found it easier mm -hmm. because I grew up in the Dominican Republic, right? I graduated high school okay. from the Dominican. So I kind of, you know, I, I understand the lifestyle over there and how people function, although they've innovated tremendously and they keep growing. Um, I don't think maybe I would have moved out of state as opposed to abroad, right? Being single, then married, right? So 
now being in, in, you know, having a child, my husband, I think it makes more sense. I would have just gotten up. No, to answer your question, no. Being single, maybe abroad, perhaps, no, maybe, I don't know, Europe or something. I don't know, Dominican Republic, maybe. Yeah. 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 No, because I, I find that, um, like, I've been searching where to be since my son's moved out of the house to go yeah. to college. And, you know, I thought Florida at first, and then I made a couple of trips out there, and I'm just like, you know what, I just, you, you kind of need somebody. You can't yeah. just move totally alone. You need a cousin, yeah. you need something. You Agreed. Know, because it can be very isolating. That's it, isolating. Yes, yes. And it makes it really difficult for you to adapt, right? To the whole new life. I, I think just alone, it's like, okay, so where do, where do I go? What do I do? So I, I'm, I'm alone most of the time. I, I mean, outside of like work, outside of what happens like, Sunday six o'clock when you want to go and kick it you know you yeah. would find yourself at the bars by yourself like, of course of course there's nobody else to go with you know? yeah and nothing wrong with going to the bar by yourself though no nothing's wrong with that but if you continuously have to do it how do you get that trust again that comfortability with yeah somebody you no know, of you course just, you make new friends you reinvent yourself listen Overall, Yo, my name is Rebecca when I don't know people I'm like hi <laughs> <laughs> alter egos Overall, Dali, I think, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say, I think it's great that you're considering, you know, to move. I think that us as humans, we need that. We need that change. You know, we, that's great. It's fulfilling. But I think that eventually you will find a place. Just picture this way. Do I picture myself here? You know, you do Mm -hmm. have some type of connection, single or not single, you know, because we traveled to the Dominican Republic, um, but a year before, right? Like two times, several times before we actually moved kind of to envision everything. Do I picture myself here? This is what I see myself doing and so on and so one thing that's another and we just close your eyes and did it because uno no puede decir me voy a mudar me voy a mudar pero uno nunca lo hace unless you close your eyes and just do it that's and once true you're but there, you're, you know mm-hmm. you make a work you make a oh, work. oh yeah I, I don't know if i would ever move to the dominican republic that was definitely a question back in the days when i was growing yeah. up for my anywhere. parents built a house and they're yeah. like oh we're moving that's back true. Yeah, and I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I can move over here, you know. Or you could be intercoastal. You never know, you know. And I've true. always, I've always said that at some point in my life, I'm gonna live in Paris. Yeah, so That's wonderful. Yeah. When I grow up, mm. I'm gonna go to when Paris. You grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which so, is very surprising, Mari, in because of the birds. No, that's wrong. That's Susana. That's not. Birds no, no, so that's Mari too, but there are a lot of birds in Paris too. too. Wait, you no. don't like birds? Yeah. I talking. fucking hate birds. She's Susana 2.0. You want, you want to see me spaz? It, it, uh, put a bird near me. Put a feather near me. Watch me spaz. I don't even buy like goose down pillows because I don't like them shit. You know, but, I had a conversation with Sue the other day and she said that she could never go to Paris. And I was like, I didn't realize there were that many birds there or whatever. And she was like, yeah, Paris is a place that I will never go. And I was like, oh, okay. No, That's I went true. to Paris and I didn't see any No, birds. I know, I know. Yeah. So I think it's more in like Rome and Italy and stuff. I don't think, pa- I, well, I would know because I pay attention. No, and she's Sicilian. Oh, How's that happening? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, we're running out of time and I don't want this to like abruptly end. So I wanted to, you know, thank you guys for coming on, taking time. And I know that Dalisa is the freaking, what is it? Eight o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning over there. You look amazing, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Hell yeah, girl. You look amazing. You look good. La leche está buena. La leche Mm. está buena. (laughs) Yeah, but you know, it's been one year since we all got on this journey and I am so grateful that we, you know, that we did this because we developed a sisterhood that although we don't see each other all the time and we're in different countries and different parts of the country, you know, at some point, three months down, I'll shoot Dalisa a text, how you doing, Eco Monada, we pick up right where we left off, the same way Gwen and Jeanette always, you know, because she'd be disappearing and then she pops up again, like, oh, hey, how, how you doing? So, you know, I'm glad that we, you know, that we did this, you know, that um, we have something else to bond us together. So, and, you know, this has been a real hard year for a lot of us. It's been a year of change. It's been a year of growth. It's been a a year to, you know, to kind of like take chances. And now we're in the situation that, you know, this is this in our lifetime, like our parents didn't go through something, a pandemic. So 
you know, it's, it's gonna, when we get out of this, we're going to be different people also. And, Definitely. you know, more resilient and everything. Yep. For sure. Yeah. So, um, so Zuli, you want to, you know, you've been awfully quiet over there or Jeanette, cause you know, we, we need to hear your voices. I'm taking it all in, you know, it's, there's just been a lot going on. So I'm glad that we had the chance to do this virtually. I mean, I guess, you know, this is one good thing about being quarantined, right? You can actually connect with your friends and talk to them and see them. You don't, you know, cause sometimes you're like, oh, I'm going to come out and see you. And then things happen and you never make it. But at least this, you, there's no excuse. You can't say, well, I'm too busy to, to call you and have a chat conversation. So I'm glad that we did this and that we caught up with everyone and that everyone has been doing amazing and great things. I mean, it just, it's a testament yeah. to who we are. We're strong women. And we got to so, see each other's faces. Cause yes. we, yes. And we don't hear our voices. We don't see our faces. But to actually look at like where they, like, I mean, damn, like Dominicanas, I'm sorry. We don't fucking age. Cause <laughs> uh, like we ain't wearing makeup and look at this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the good genes. <laughs> Got together. Um, you know, it's been uh, challenging coming back. Um, so I'm super busy, super busy, uh, as usual. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. So I'm glad that we got together, and I just want to make sure that we all live life to the fullest every day, um, and uh, be positive, say positive things. Um, be good. Let's be good to each other and to everyone else, and try to um, just stay in a good place because we need that. We need that. We need that. You know, because we don't. You need the good energy, and we also need to like reinvent ourselves. You know, um, time is is precious, and it's it's something that's been given. Definitely. Um, through this COVID situation, and it's something we should take advantage of. Mom and uncle, you'll never get tired. They both have nine lives. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, we're up to 20 that. lives with, with dad and Tia Maria, with my dad and Tia Maria. We're up to like 20, which, hey, we're, I'll, I'll embrace it. I think, let it well, But the good becoming. thing about them is that they go in sync. When one gets better, the other one also gets better. If yes. one slips back, the other one's, so we sort of know what's going to happen. Based They're competing. On, They're competing against yeah, each other. They just want yeah. your attention. So <laughs> my uncle Johnny was like, well, yo, wait a minute. This bitch going home? Like, what the fuck? Wait, screw that. Motherfucker was going to go to Ohio. And they put a stop. They, had, they were going to, because they were making his nursing home, uh, COVID nursing home. And they called up my aunt and be like, uh, we're shipping him up to Ohio. They're like, uh, no, you're not. So now he's in a place in Brooklyn and he's doing a lot better. And he's like, yo, check this out. I can't go home. I don't feel like being in Jersey anymore. My ass is heading to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> he's a hipster. Oh, wow. He's a hipster. Yes. So, ladies, my last promise. My, Lizette would send her uh, daily updates. Oh, mom is not doing well. And I'm like, yeah, all right, whatever. Let me go pray. I told her the same thing. I told her the same thing. Watch. That bitch is going to psych you out. You're going to go to the hospital. She's going to be like, psych. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but listen, ladies, let's promise that when this all ends, vamos a San Cocho mi casa? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. congratulations on your new home. Congrats. Thank you. Yes. Congrats. Yes. Yeah, that bitch is out of control. Mari, I'm sorry. Can we end it with this? Janet's making rabo tonight. Well, tonight. <laughs> Psych. But it's, it's not, not like we can go, go and eat, eat over there. So why would you no. even say that? Yeah, exactly. But I'm just, I, I have to go over there. Deliver? I'm going to give her a break. But I thought you were making rabo. I'm making bagalao. Holla. That's Yo, <laughs> are we talking about food or are we talking about other uh, rabo bacala? Dolly, real quick. I yeah, see that Cali right? sun in your back. I see the California <laughs> sun. Just get, yeah, I just, you know, What's reminisce the about the R. <laughs> What's the it's temperature? It's amazing. It's like 90 degrees. I can't wait. Ah, I can't, I can't wait. That's can't it. wait. All right, let's 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 kick her. Let's boot her off this meeting. <laughs> yeah, so be disrespectful. I'm living through you right now, darling. <laughs> we can't talk to shit. We got 70, 70 But for you, I would have been doing the same shit in DR right now. Yeah. <laughs> Florida, me and Florida, Florida be like, it's eighty degrees. Nobody asked you. Mira, patodita Mira, patodita All right, ladies. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. We have to continue through. this. We yes. have to continue yes. this, a part two. Yes, yes. for sure. We yes. will. For sure. Stay safe, guys. Bye. Yes, you Love too. you, ladies. Bye, ladies. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.
Hey guys, so we just had a very wonderful conversation with our former co-host and we're just so grateful that they were able to join us from different parts of the country. Um, so now let's talk about El Salon. What have we been up to? What's new in our world? Whose birds are chirping? Me. <laughs> no, they're, okay. they're like right there. Tampahao. They're right, right in the window. Wait, like, go away. Mari's like this. I was just making sure it wasn't me because I have birds outside my windows. The, all the windows are closed here. I'm so afraid. So that I live by a fly. bird sanctuary. <laughs> oh. So there's always, so at night, so we have nightingales. So they don't start twerping till 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. And they go on throughout the whole entire night twerping, twerping their asses yeah. away. I have a hope because the bushes in front of my door, that we have a lot of birds that congregate there. And I'm always afraid that I open the door and they're gonna, one of them's gonna fly in, and I'll be like, okay. But they're they're cute birds, but they they make a nice noise. That's my now see that's my fear. Like I have them outside my window and it's fine, but there's a there's a mesh, so I know that they're not gonna come in. But they get so close. Like these Corona birds have gotten real bold. <laughs> Yo, they like in my window and I'm like fuck out of here I close the shade they're gonna Very listen you're walking around with no underwear no bra they want to see you they're gonna peck at my nipple <laughs> <laughs> yo speaking of nipples yo Liz fucking always throws me under the bus she's like oh somebody found this I was like I was starting to get red look I'm getting red again <laughs> so I didn't get she to stays. She stays like, Toma, stays. Espérate, vamos a tirarla. <laughs> it's great like... information. So, so um, when you mentioned that, I was going to go into it, but then you know we only had a limited time with the girls. So I'll say it now is that um, the other, you know, during this whole thing, you know, Randy and I were, you know, trying to find ways to keep it spicy and stuff. And so I was looking up sensual massages. And I came across a, a video and it said, you know, pussy massage. And so I, you know, decided, well, let's watch this. And uh, it turned out to be real interesting. Um, uh, they say that you release a lot of like trauma and it's not about like having sex. It's about like, you know, like just paying attention to the area, honoring the area and just going around it. It's not about like penetration. I mean, eventually it can get there, it depends. But um, through there, and they say, cause I've been doing a little bit more research that some women actually like cry because it releases something in you and like trauma in your vaginal area and all this stuff. So, so yeah, so that's what, you know, I didn't get to say it before, but, um, but that's what uh, I discovered during the coronavirus. Well, um, I, I was watching it and I was only able to watch the first portion because I was like this. <laughs> I was like, okay, shutting this shit down because it's, it's very intimate. It's very sensual. It's very, and like you say, you release so much. I was like, yeah, click, not right now. You have to be in a, in a position where you can just feel like, you know, like yoga when you're doing that or when you, you know, zenny, you have to be in a place where you're concentrated, but it's very, very sensual. Well, speaking of like being in a place where you're, you know, you're, you know, you, you're, you're ready to receive energy or expel energy. Um, Zuli, I, I wanted to mention this to you because, you know, I know that you are a lot about energy. And I've been looking up a lot of like information on like, mira, yo tengo un el cacho me está saliendo aquí. No, está mirando. <laughs> so um, I've been looking about, I've been looking up a lot on like energy and just oneness because I think that with everything that is going on and what's happening, like we have to become more aware of you know our right. impact on the earth and on each mm -hmm. other but also more aware of like what we put out and what we allow. And one thing is that when I've been doing, so another thing is I'm doing yoga now. And with that, You're good. I'm, you know, I'm learning to breathe. I'm learning to relax, meditating in the morning. And I just feel myself like healing um, spiritually, emotionally in a lot of ways. But I also am starting to 
tap into things that I'm, I don't know enough about yet and I'm not mm-hmm. completely comfortable with yet. So I've started protecting my crown. And that is something that I've learned that when you are uh, starting to get into a higher vibration, um, I need to do to that. Protect, you have to protect your crown because we allow, allow a lot of things to come in and they oh. affect us. So, um, so yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. And I have to start doing that. I'll wrap my shit up all day long. Yo, vi, yo vivo en vuelta, mira, and y esto cabello. I mean, it's not the thing that's keeping it down. It's not the wrap, and my hair is like completely flat because yo me lo mantengo. Yeah. You know. Well, yesterday Strong. I wrapped it up, but because I was out in in public and stuff like that, but I wrapped it up. But um, that's good. But the two of you, you 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 both of you are very into vibes and energy and like. Like, it's very powerful for you. I wish I had that. Like, you guys, like, literally have a reaction when you're in a, in a negative environment that's not positive. Like, you automatically, like, I've watched the two of you. And it's not like you're brujas or anything, but it's just like something comes over you and you really have your aura changes completely. Yeah. And I think I need to tap that's, into that's that amazing. more. Yeah. I definitely need to learn a little bit more about it. I, don't, I haven't taken the time to learn more you know because i i'm very sensitive and i pick up a lot and it changes my mood instantaneously like it's um it's a little annoying sometimes because i don't know what how to handle it i don't know what to do with it but i do need to read up on it what happened if you tapped into that if you that's well the the time that we went to the um the red tent well the red tent fucked me up for like a week i mean i was all you know, we could talk about that. So we went to the red, te- red tent um, from Brujas of Brooklyn. And I don't know if we've talked about this already, but... Um, we have an episode on it. Yeah, we well, have. and so, you know, it just messed me up completely where I didn't... Re- okay, so as we started to do the chants and stuff like that, um, I became nauseous. I became very sensitive. I started to cry because I was feeling the from the bottom of my feet and on the palms of my hand I was feeling vibrations so I was picking up everyone's energy wow. and um it made me nauseous it made me weird it was just it's weird because I don't know how to explain it and I don't know how to manage it so of course leaving there that whole week at work was just crazy just in general I was very sensitive I was moody and I think I was moody because I didn't know what to make of my emotions so much so that I had a breakdown at work I had a full on mental breakdown that has never happened to me in my life. Never mind at work. It's never happened to me outside of work. That's and, right. It was right right the week after that red tent. Yes. Yeah. And and I was just like, what's going on? What's going on? I don't know what's going on with me. And Maddie was like, You've been like this since the red tent. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Yes, I have. And I was just like, I, I don't know what that did. It opened up like something inside of me that just made me very sensitive and vulnerable and I don't want to say I didn't like it I just didn't like the fact that I didn't know how to manage it um so it's something that I do need to learn how to manage let me ask but you not, so, I'm sorry then. no and I was gonna say but not even that the day that we had the event at um octagon and they were playing musica de palo and I started dancing and I was like, I can't do that because the minute I start to do that, it just, I feel like it's going to take me to another, I don't know, it's weird to explain. So I was like, eh, I'll, I'll dance it for a little bit, but I won't get into it. I won't allow myself to get into it. Isn't it interesting how much we've explored in this year? Like we've gone to a red tent, something that I didn't even know existed before. I know. Yeah, we have um, had the Brujas of Brooklyn on our show, talking about you know spirituality and things like that. And then you know, so we're opening ourselves up, and as we're educating people, we're educating ourselves because right, we are we are lear- we are teaching as we learn, mm-hmm. you know, and learn more about ourselves. I'm sorry, Liz, I know I interrupted. I just wanted to throw that in because it's like the culmination no, no, of the I year. Think that what you're saying is very important because of everything else that we've talked about. You're right. We've really dug deep, but I wanted to ask, what I wanted to ask you, Zuli, is that um, 
since that breakdown, right? And I know that the octagon happened after and is very specific to the thing. Have you felt, I don't mean the breakdown, but since the experience at the red tent that culminated with you having that emotional uh, uh, revelation, if you will, do you feel that you're different or you're still more sensitive to the things or did you go back to pre uh, red tent? But even pre, you, no, I mean, it, it, I'm fine now. Um, it took like about a week and change for me to kind of get back to what, what I feel is me. Um, so no, yeah, I think if I would have continued to tap into it, I probably would have learned how to, you know, navigate. Like that would have been it. your opening. Like, like it's now yeah. it's, it's gone away again. You're not at that, not that you're, you're, you know, at that place where you had that issue at work or whatever, but if you're, if you're just a little more sensitive because you opened up something or did you go back to no, the way you were? I'm back. You were the yeah. No, I went back to the way I was before. She closed that door. She closed yeah. that door. I didn't, I didn't tap into it. I didn't. Mm -mm. When you're mm -hmm. ready, when you're ready, yeah. I think that, um, that we learn about ourselves when we're ready to learn, mm -hmm. because these are things that I used to be afraid of. And yeah. I no longer am. Yo nunca he ido, I mean, you know, de que donde una bruja y vaina así, because, um, I don't know. I just, yo soy bien pendeja para esa vaina. And I'm just afraid. And I'm also, in part, like, sometimes I know things and I don't know why I know them or how I know them. And I don't mm -hmm. like knowing them either. And sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. And when they're bad, it's almost like you experience it twice because you experience it in your mind and then right. when it happens. So it's like, in a way, I'm just like, but I'm starting to get more and more comfortable with the idea that, you know, I, I may be able to tap into something else. And this is through us, through you guys, mm. through El Salon, and the people that we've met along the way in this first year. I mean, look at what we did. We, we, we acted in a, in a monologue, in an off-Broadway show. You I know? know. That's something that I never thought I could do. Yeah. You know? Me neither. I mean, I think Liz is the most appropriate to speak on this because she jumped in at the uh, at the end. I know and she embraced it. Took off. No, I um, I I'm a frustrated actress. Like I always wanted to be an actress. So even when I was a little girl, I would always be, you know, doing this and in school and just always wanting to do. And I don't know why I never tapped into that. So I was. I, I thank you guys because you, Mari. Um, but I think it was you that Claudia asked when uh, somebody dropped out at the end. And I, I, I think maybe you just said yes for me. Or, and then you said, hey, Liz, because I was having like severe FOMO because the day that you guys auditioned, I was not able to go. And so I had already bought my ticket for the closing night and everything. And, but I was so happy to be a part of it. Um, I was not happy with how fat I looked in my dress. <laughs> Jeez, then we are. I was Goodness like, Lord. um, and uh, I know I drove you batty, <laughs> Mari. <laughs> I, can, I, I, I know enough and then I can, I'm, I'm good at winging stuff, you know, in the last minute or whatever. Um, but I was, I, I feel very grateful and fortunate to have been able to be a part of that. And then the residual effects is the connections the you know with the with the girls like that's still our chat you know tvm um so yeah it was it was amazing so i think i want to i want to tap into that more in this other part of my life hmm. you guys are the artists and the graphics and miss technical i can't with you <laughs> I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna tap into the more uh, artistic <laughs> listen if i had the time i would actually go on auditions I would actually go out on casting calls. I've looked at the paper. Casting writing. calls are virtual now, so you can do it from home. So, oh, that's right. You can definitely, yeah. See, I, I, I love that, but I, it's hard. But I would definitely entertain it as well. Yeah. I don't know that I would do it again. No, you didn't enjoy Probably it. Enough. So uh, wait, so you weren't gonna do the Broadway one? I was gonna say you were gonna do the Broadway. I, if, if the two of you did it, I were, I, I would have been like, okay, but honestly, the, the stress that I felt, it's just, I, I'm and not I put like you. you. Under? 
<laughs> I'm not like you. I mean, I, you guys are amazing in that way where it's like, you don't understand. I drove everybody crazy in my house. Every, I was in the kitchen. Andy, you're rehearsing with me. Randy, you're rehearsing with me. Everybody's rehearsing because I needed to learn like when my cues were, when, and I had to learn word for word what I was supposed to say. And that was the fucking problem because Lizette never said whatever she was supposed to say. So I'd be looking at her like, like there's so many pictures of me doing this, you know? So but let me ask you a question. Um, Do you think that you would have been less stressed and better if it was like Suli's part, like you're, you alone? Um... Mm, I don't know. <laughs> that was and hard. Then, and learning those words and, oh. but and you know what? It makes sense. Tantalizing. Panting. <laughs> I think I, see, I think I could have, I think that would have been easier for me. Yeah. Can I tell you something though, Mari? Mm. I know all my lines now. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. I can say them at a drop of a hand. I'm actually remembering them now. <laughs> of course. So we did the vagina monologues. We did our event. Let's talk about here with the hair saint. Um, have you guys been following her? You know, because her her salon has been shut down. You know that. Well, I got my hair done. Yeah. Right after, uh, you know, after that, and I was supposed to go because the colorist there. I was very happy um, with the cut and the trim and everything, and. As you can see, I'm not a blonde. I'm letting, you know, all that grow out to be, you know, more healthy. But I was supposed to go back to continue to reinvent my new me and just like put little pieces or whatever, like just do something more. Um, right. So I'm looking forward. But I'm not going to go back to a salon or a nail place for a while. Like, I'm I'm really going to see how this summer plays out. Okay. and. I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I don't have hair. I, I don't have to shave or anything like that. So I hate you guys, the both of you. <laughs> That's right. But, and so I don't wear deodorant and I don't have to I shave. I look like I'm wearing shorts right now because I only <laughs> shave up to my knees. <laughs> you got furry legs. I so have, guys, like, we have, we pants have on. eight minutes. The, the oh, timer okay. came up. So we have eight minutes. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to be doing any of that for a while. So yeah. Um, but, uh, what else did we do? So ESC, so we, we did the, I did the big chop with the hair saint and yes. we met the Brooklyn Brujas and we also had Omar, we had Juan Bago, we had Hector Hidalgo, the single daddy, we had Ronnie, we had Kevin. We had, uh, we hooked up a couple of people. Yes, but we're not going to go there right now. No, we just, that's <laughs> just putting it out there. We hooked up a couple, we've done a lot right. of little things. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so we, we launched our website. Yes. We, that was a big one, yes. And we We're have an LLC. Merch. We're an yes. LLC now. We have an official la business. Mia, la mia rosada. <laughs> oh, yeah, why is yours red? Is um, this was, this yours was one tan. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got our business license. We have our, our tax ID. We launched our website. Um, guys, you got to go on there. It is amazing. And uh, Zuli, show the cups. So maybe we're gonna we're gonna maybe put some cups out there. Well, the I, I I used it last night, so it's in the kitchen. I'm not gonna be able to walk over okay. there. But so we'll yeah, we're it. gonna be putting more stuff on there. Um, and we're excited. Yes. So um, yeah, that that's uh, the culmination of this season for us. How do you guys feel? We about still have that? two little more surprises coming out that we're gonna mm -hmm. end out the season. And then we're going to start season four with a bang, as usual. Right. Zuli? I mean, it's like, right? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, you know, I don't know. Are we going to do a hiatus or are we just going to go right, right into it? Because we kind of did. We kind of just kept going. Um, no, I, I don't know. We could, well, we're going to have a little hiatus um, just so that we can have the time to, you know, reorganize regroup hopefully we come out of this um quarantine soon yeah so in the meantime we will work on the on the online store on the e-store uh our website on some events that we have coming up collaborations um, give me some time to lose 50 pounds yeah y cuando salgamos de eso, entonces, if it's too hot then it's a barbecue or if yes. it's cold then it's a sancocho or a rabo whatever but um liking all those ideas 
<laughs> they all involve they all involve fatty food. <laughs> Listen, I don't know when I'm gonna get myself on track and lose this forty pounds. <sighs> And been, Zuli, like hard. right before this ended up, you had a whole new trainer and a whole new I had schedule. a trainer. I paid yeah, for it. I only did two sessions with him. So he owes me a whole bunch. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully this all, ha you know, we get over this so that I can get back on track with my trainer. Oh, you know what? One of our guests that we had last year that I still stay in contact, she says that she misses us very much, Genesis. Remember oh, Genesis? Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yes. She always sends yeah. messages and she says she misses us. She, um, I see her online and she's, you know, being a young person, still enjoying yeah. life. So, I, you know, I'm happy. For I you like the Genesis. three of us. That <laughs> we, nah. She's, she's Mine, our, our little sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we also gained Sabrina, who has been yes. amazing through all of she this. She has been yes. amazing. So Shout out to heart. Sabrina. Yes. yes. Yeah. So um, with that, I want to say thank you, Zuli. Thank you, Liz. I can't believe we actually did this. I'm very grateful. Wow. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. Liz, drink your cafecito. And, and thank you for putting up with my mood swings. <laughs> for your rent and your mood swings. Bye. All right. We'll see you next season. That's not Bye. coffee in there, I know. <laughs> Te veo, bacalao. Bye, Bye, guys. Ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. Oye, ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. Escucha, ladies of El Salón, The Chronicles. What up, mi gente?